and also chat gpt which has helped more i really appreciate uh, whatever the knowledge you have given me during the course of chat gpt in, uh, in artificial intelligence in the healthcare i was asked those questions in the interview uh, in dubai which is uh, telecasted in youtube also on on my linkedin page uh, health 2.0 platform before that i was not aware of those how the artificial intelligence influences the healthcare mm -hmm. but uh, after joining your calls uh, i have enlightened with the uh, those aspects so i'm thinking in those lines right. and uh, so it uh, helped me a lot to speak in front of uh, so many audience Hello friends welcome to this another episode of Hall of Fame and we have with us today Dr Suman uh, she is a multitasker and a multi specialist plus she is a is one person who has handled lot of ups and downs in his her life but she has come out shining in every step she is a gynecologist she is practicing in hyderabad and she has a vast experience of uh, academics and research plus she has done the endoscopy fellowship also and she has got many laurels and accolades at her disposal when she came from the america and during the covid times she had helped a lot of people and welcome ma'am and congratulations thank you thank you ma'am aapko thoda sa background batayenge i'm uh, born and brought up in hyderabad Okay. Uh, from native of uh, Gajwal, but uh, brought up in Hyderabad, Telangana, and uh, I have studied uh, schooling and medicine in Hyderabad up to the post graduation in anesthesia from Gandhi Medical College and Osmani Medical College. Okay. And uh, after that, uh, from two thousand two, as soon as I finished my internship, I got married and uh, I started uh, managing a nursing home. At mm -hmm. that. Uh, I mean, uh, just finishing the MBBS. It's a too young age to handle mm -hmm. a seventy-bedded nursing home. So after that, uh, I was so stressed during those times because mm -hmm. I only have the medical knowledge. I didn't have the experience uh, regarding the medicine or the hospital management. So I learned uh, how the things will be by seeing them, and uh, I have practiced almost for ten years. Mm -hmm. uh, during this tenure. I finished anesthesia and gynecology, okay. and I conceived. Uh, I blessed with a baby boy and girl. Very good. During these ten years, it's a very stressful period uh, because of uh, changing uh, normal life. I mean, uh, pampered with the parents to the newly wedding life, yeah. along with the new responsibilities with the uh, hospital and carrying the children and finishing the post graduation is very. Tough task for me of ten that, years. That to double, ah, huh? obstetric also and anesthesia. Also. Anesthesia also. Great. So during those times, uh, during the two deliveries, my health was uh, suffered a lot. In after first delivery, I succumbed with a CVA and uh, with a facial paralysis and right hemiparesis, okay. right paralysis. Heavy paralysis. So after three months on one month on bed, after three months on uh, physiotherapy, I recovered and wow. I started my race again. Great, great. But great uh, still, of... I'm on medication. Okay. And uh, after ten years, uh, I started uh, exploring abroad with a fellowship in uh, gynec endoscopy in Germany. And uh, I did few of the courses and few fellowships. Like I finished uh, in twenty after two thousand thirty to two thousand uh, till now. I'm in the Hyderabad. Before the ten years where I was practiced in the rural area, which is a Mandal. Okay. So from two thousand thirteen again, I entered into the corporate world. I was associated with Apollo Hospitals, and uh, I finished my fellowship over there again, and I practiced. Uh, during the covid time in 2021 i was i went to us for two and a half years where i, I exposed to the obgyn field uh, in the us and uh, it's kind of a fellowship over there mm -hmm. and during that time i have explored so many things in the us i visited the places and how will be the culture over there and all this. 
and later uh, coming over here uh, again uh, during my return journey to the India, I have blushed uh, with uh, or facilitated with so many uh, facilitations. Mm -hmm. I received a uh, few of the awards from the Vegas. But uh, after I came in the Hyderabad, I received those awards. So I have taken in the Dubai. And uh, it is also a good experience. I met with uh, so many global uh, surgeons and also in all the fields. Mm. Then now I just finished the NHS uh, fellowship in uh, reproductive medicine and sexual medicine. And uh, I have finished my public speaking skills from the Bangalore Indian Academy of uh, Public Speaking Skills mm. and also ChatGPT, which has helped more. I really appreciate uh, whatever the knowledge you have given me during the course of ChatGPT and, uh, and artificial intelligence with the healthcare. I was asked those questions in the interview uh, in Dubai, which is uh, telecasted in YouTube also on, on my LinkedIn page, uh, Health 2.4 platform. Before that, I was not aware of those, how the artificial intelligence influences the healthcare. Mm -hmm. But uh, after joining your calls, uh, I have enlightened with the, uh, those aspects. So I'm thinking in those lines. Right. And uh, so it uh, helped me a lot to speak in front of uh, so many audience. And uh, now I'm also pursuing, uh, I am in healthcare management Richie program, okay. postgraduate uh, MBA program in healthcare management. So simultaneously, I put my feet uh, in two or three fields. And then I'm also associated with the Kolimon Research uh, USA and Alpha sites of China. So I usually, whenever uh, there is a client from China or US, I'll have an uh, expert opinion uh, during those calls. I have paid for those calls, but it usually one hour to half an hour calls. So early basis, sometimes uh, not regularly, but sometimes. Also. And uh, this is my entire uh, professional or personal career. And uh, now my siblings are abroad. I'm the only person uh, living in India. Okay. And uh, wherever I work, I believe the corporate culture, ethics, and uh, I'm in friendly environment. And I do my best, whatever in my effort. And uh, the financially respectful, and uh, I'll help the people who are with me. And I encourage the people who are with me. And uh, whatever I lack, I can uh, learn the points from what uh, lacunae. I can fill up those points from others also. So it's like a uh, fun full career with lots of uh, fun and enjoyment. How long have you been with, with our academy? I joined in uh, almost uh, November of 2023. Okay. More than six months. Yes. So uh, life has been fair to you and unfair to you in times, right? How did you keep your poise? Usually for the everyone, the life is not a straight line. It is like ACG. Sometimes up, sometimes down. But when there is down, we should not, at that moment, we feel low. But we have to, uh, if we tackle that low moment, we can achieve bigger. So uh, during the stress periods, I managed with exploring myself with the inner peace by doing meditation or chatting with the friends and explore my network. And then I'll come up with the bounce. Right. So every fall follows a big bounce. That yes. is happened in my life, neat step, health wise and professional wise. So mm -hmm. I strongly believe every fall followed by a peak. So during falls, don't feel low. When you feel low, remember your past peaks and uh, move forward with the enthusiasm and determination. Tell us about your academic career. How did you plan it and how did it go? The academic career from the childhood onwards, one word imposed on my brain. Was I have to be a doctor. My oh. dad is a retired chief engineer now, uh, hailing the Hyderabad district. Only he was putting one word onto my uh, brain that you have to be a doctor. So okay. I don't know about the doctor profession. <laughs> Just I know I have to be doctor. <laughs> so in the <laughs> after uh, 10th class, uh, I have taken the IPC uh, unknowingly. Uh, mm. The only uh, one thought is uh, to become a doctor. And uh, I got in first attempt, I got in homeopathy. Okay. 
but I, I didn't take in the homeopathy. But second attempt, I have to choose in the medicine. Okay. And I, I have joined in the prestigious Gandhi Medical College, Hyderabad. And there uh, I had a good friend circle and uh, I explored the knowledge. The base was very strong. Whatever the values and knowledge given my professors of Gandhi Medical College, I always salute them. Because of them, I'm here today. And uh, after finishing my graduation, I entered into the one more medical college, the Usmania Medical College, where the knowledge is very vast. And I learned how the sternious activities of the doctors can do right. during the postgraduate periods, the 36 hours, the duties, those are increases our stamina to work in the future. And uh, after that, I practiced for three years anesthesia. I have very much happier by exploring the knowledge of anesthesia. But after practicing anesthesia, my mind is always freaking for the surgeries while operating, how the, the surgeons uh, managing the surgical on table decisions and, yeah. and the surgical skills. I was very much uh, influenced by the surgeons and surgical activities. So again, uh, after delivering my second child, I pursued uh, gynecology yeah. and uh, I have enjoyed the education in the Mumbai. Yeah. Uh, till that time, I was the only a woman in the Hyderabad city. Mm -hmm. I didn't uh, explore uh, other than the Hyderabad. Mm -hmm. But the first time I had I have got the opportunity in the Mumbai, I love the Mumbai city. And uh, it's a second home for me where my life turned a lot. Uh, I have exposed to the uh, new environment and new professors and new colleagues. Uh, I explored a lot. After that, from there only, uh, I went to the Germany and my professor, Dr. Prashant, uh, and uh, from Germany, Lizolit Mittler, their guidance helped me a lot uh, by do for the learning of laparoscopic surgeries. And uh, in my batch, uh, in the girls, I'm the most uh, technical person, I mean to say, uh, technically high-skilled person in laparoscopy by doing the innovating laparoscopic technology and laparoscopic surgeries in women. And I am happier for that. And uh, during this process, uh, I have explored and I have met with uh, so many facilitations and I expanded my work. I reached those people and their uh, interactions helped me to grow personally and professionally. I have uh, enlightened with uh, so many people like uh, included Dr. Pranav Sharma and uh, Amit also. Thank you for their help uh, in our Thank healthcare you, so. industry. So artificial intelligence was the thing which you learned from the courses and the program that we gave you. How did it help you? Yes, I learned artificial intelligence uh, from the Dr. Trenier Academy and uh, the knowledge and the, the importance of the artificial intelligence given by you people is enlightened me. And uh, in Dubai and Vegas, I had the opportunity to speak about the artificial intelligence in healthcare. The knowledge shared by you people is uh, helped a lot to speak in front of a greater audience okay. in the global stage. You are an example of a person who will follow his heart and follow his, you know, whatever his conscience is telling. Because second time doing a PG, people don't do even the first time. You've done the PG two different subjects and you have followed your, whatever your heart has told you, right? Yes, yes. And uh, after that, you have ventured into the academics, research also, and your practice. So what are the things that you are thinking that they are grateful for when you're setting up of your practice? In every step, I strongly believe in my heart. What it says, I'll follow and I'll do the my next steps in the career will be. Right. So usually in each step, whatever I learned, from the graduation, post-graduation to the courses which are uh, molded me uh, to become a perfectionist. Uh, I'm not completely perfectionist, but I'm towards the perfectionist what I feel. So ma'am, tell me about uh, your uh, family, all, who all are there and what are they doing? Have they contributed yeah. to your career? How they have helped you out? Yeah. Actually, I'm an elder daughter of uh, Narsim Dasa Sujata. He's a retired chief engineer. My mother is a homemaker. We are three. I'm the elder daughter. And I have uh, two kids. And my husband is a software engineer. And kids, one is elder one, uh, completed uh, 
computer science, cyber security, and uh, digital forensics in Dehradun University, UBES. And now uh, moving to the Australia Sydney Macquarie University for the MS. Okay. And my daughter studying in 11th standard in Hyderabad. Ashay's interest is to become an IITM in AI and ML. We'll see, mm -hmm. hope so. Her hard work makes it uh, become mm -hmm. a dream. And uh, coming to my siblings, my brother and my younger sister. Brother is a director of Trend Micro uh, to the Australia and the New Zealand. And uh, my sister-in-law is also an MBA graduate. They are a permanent residents and citizens of the Australia and Sydney. Uh, they are living with their children. And my younger sister uh, and uh, brother-in-law, both are uh, engineers. They are working in uh, US, Phoenix, with their uh, children over there. And in every step, my parents and siblings are greater support to me. Why? Because without their support, I can't uh, achieve all those things. Because for the education, the children rearing, everything is supported by my parents. And my siblings, always, whenever I know, they will talk to me and uh, will exchange our ideas. And uh, they are also a greater pillar of my strength. So you have been a leader in your zone and you have handled the hospitals at a very young age. So what yes. is the experience about that? Please tell us. How important was that part in your career? Yes. Actually, as soon as I finished my medicine in 2002, I went to a, a mandal where I was handed over a 70 bedded hospital. And uh, those ha hospital, it's very interior area. Sisters or the staff, the doctors, the doctors are the only educational and qualified uh, persons, whereas the staff were under training. So it was a difficult task for me at that age. Why? Because I only have the medical knowledge. I didn't have the clinical experience and the healthcare management skills. Mm -hmm. But because of uh, by doing whatever we know, whatever we read, I started implementing in the hospital. Right. And I started by doing. I learned by doing. And uh, I have uh, taken a few of the... Uh, inputs from the seniors who are in the industry and uh, I have established a hospital which is a moderate set of hospital. I didn't achieve the peak but uh, after 10 years of experience I got so much of experience over there. At an engage by 24 by 7 the rural services are not like appointment services is not like a corporate hospital. Right. It is a mid-sized hospital where you are exposed to the public frequently. They are uh, within reach. So I had a greater experience over there. My skills improved a lot by doing excessive work. But it is very difficult task. Once you earn the knowledge about the healthcare, once you earn, you learn the experience. After that, only establishing a hospital is better. Uh, whatever I did, I did. But for the Youngers, I want to say, start with a clinic and establish a hospital. Mm -hmm. And to complete your education and complete uh, the knowledge about the establishing of a hospital and establish. That is the way you can have a smooth uh, development of your healthcare yeah. career instead of taking over uh, a big asset in a younger age. Right. Very well said. Ma'am, uh, can you tell us that uh, has the Foreign training help you and how about others, how should they go about the foreign training? Yes, foreign training helped me a lot. Why It makes me an independent individual. The discipline I learned, the time factor, punctuality I learned. And uh, the way of communication to the clients or to the patients also I learned a lot. It is uh, nowadays the corporates are having those kind of uh, communicative skills. But when we enter into the abroad, each and every step is it's in a precise manner and with accuracy. And the documentation, I learned the documentation process. Most of the our hospitals is not uh, electronic. They are not following the electronic health records. But uh, there, there is the electronic health records. And the facilities they are providing is a uh, edge over here. And... Um, the follow-ups, what we do, the follow-ups, 
there are uh, higher uh, end than in our uh, country so it's helped me and uh, the culture how will be the work environment and uh, how to handle the colleagues and how to handle the professors and after evening parties also the fun factor also i have learned over there along with the knowledge and skills so there was a low in your life when after the second pregnancy or something you had a stroke how do you fight out yes. there so what yeah, was the mental after... battle yes actually what happened is uh, after my delivery it was in a prolonged delivery with epidural ana- analgesia so after that uh, what happened is uh, during at the delivery time i had a uh, acute sinusitis with a fever so prolonged delivery with epidural and acute sinusitis maybe is a cause factor for postnatal uh, stroke after one month of cesarean section i had the cva cerebrovascular accident and uh, brain stroke i was hospitalized for uh, Uh, in the intensive care units for the five days, and after that one month, I had suffered a lot on the bed. Then three months, I had a physiotherapy exercises. Then I recovered a lot. Those days, uh, I was all depressed, and uh, those six months, I thought my life is end. Why? Because when I started a new life, when I'm on bed without moving my limbs. i was so upset and uh, i thought uh, my life is ended and i was uh, on antidepressants and uh, anti stroke medicines yeah. but slowly with the help of physiotherapist uh, my facial paralysis and mouth deviation has got corrected and uh, i slowly uh, gave the muscle bar of my limbs then i so slowly started walking after that slowly my uh, and i have taken a help of uh, yoga it helped me a lot uh, the kumar he is a scientist uh, he teached me a lot he comes to my home and teach me uh, the yoga and exercises he helped me a lot during those tough periods and by doing meditation i started my spark started again slowly after a year of battle i started dreaming again towards a career till that time i thought i will be an housewife i, I will not do anything uh, my life ended those thoughts just turned into the again uh, sparking towards the career again uh, i started reading for uh, post graduation and i got into the stream and slowly i became uh, you yeah, showed a lot of resistance and a lot of resilience and this is a very good lesson for all the females who are there in the medical profession that you have to balance the life to balance the work balance the family balance the husband in laws parents a lot of things but then you have to make your um, composure you have to balance the things and perform it is very difficult but uh, i can actually understand how you are like a you know eight hands there are mata shakti so that is something like that female have that power they can multitask so, so many things but it is very important to keep the mental health also yes yes absolutely so in the end i will last question is that please tell something for the youngsters or the young people who are entering into this branch of obstetrics and gynecology how should they shape their career as you said first of all health is a priority take care of your health initially by spending time on ourselves by nutritional diet and exercises and yoga and meditation after your health only your career comes when we are not spending time on ourselves we can't handle other situations right. so after focusing on yourself the career comes we have to balance the career and as well as a family especially when we are into the obgyn field and uh, taking a obgyn field is a very satisfactory field when we are handing over the new born into the parents hands it is a miraculous feeling most of the gynecologists will have after completing the obgyn now the super speciality i advise all the gynecologists to enter into the super speciality when we are trained into the depth of the knowledge only our stress levels will decrease and our expertise will increase and precision in the diagnosis and treatment is also increases
So there is now the IVF, fetal medicine, and uh, laparoscopic, and now robotics. Choose your field wisely and specialized in those parts. And uh, after a couple of uh, years or five years, you can practice independently with a great precision and accuracy. Thank you. Thank you. That are very great words of uh, experience and these are your advice in gold. Thank, Thank you. you so much for joining and uh, I wish you best of luck in all your endeavors and all the success in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Pranav. And uh, it is a great time connecting with you and nice talking to you. Hey, Mira. So if you want to understand how in AI we have helped, you can click on the link below and uh, you can join us in our special masterclass. And there we'll guide you how AI in healthcare can be uh, learned in a very easy manner. And uh, thank you, ma'am.